Learning is like eating a cheesesteak. We don't know where to start from. It is pretty messy. It is pretty hard, but in the end, it is a hundred percent worth it. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Nikolai. I'm, I'm a meta engineer at Automatic. You, you can find me on, on the web. But now back to uh, learning. Learning seems kind of important, especially now, since in the past few years, the tech around WordPress has been calm like like a, a Wednesday morning high in the mountain. Not, not much has uh, changed. And, and stability is good, but, but the world is pretty big and it happens to be changing a bit. We noticed this hit, uh, hit first in, in the past year and a half at Automatic where uh, we, we kind of wrote a brand new WordPress.com ad, admin which used a totally different tech technologies because success is, is a moving target and it may re require a bit different technology stack. Uh, so a lot of developers world has uh, changed. A lot of people ha had to uh, get used to, to, a, to a totally new development stack uh, to do purely Java, JavaScript stuff in the browser. Uh, you using using Git, GitHub and in, a, and in a single page app. And I noticed something very interesting. Um, very often, the people for whom it took a bit longer time to get used to all of this new stuff were people who were used to only one paradigm or people used to only one language, for example, PHP, or people who had only done stuff on the, on the backend and not in the browser or on mobile or a desktop. And we can find partial explanation in, in the old saying that if uh, uh, the only thing you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Mm. And it turns out that a pretty big part of learning is actually unlearning, especially if, you, if we want to learn something radically new. Uh, for, for example, in Calypso, we had to unlearn a few things. For example, how uh, instead of starting fresh on each web, web, web request, we had to carefully apply changes. And if we wanted to carefully apply, uh, apply those changes, instead of uh, Changing, changing the DOM ma manually with something using J uh, query, uh, this was a, actually a terrible approach, and we should just let React do it by itself. But unlearning those things that, that, that were very deeply ingrained in our way of working takes, takes time. And the other real realization was that the more concepts you, you keep in your head, actually it is easier to learn new ones. And either you, you don't have to unlearn things because, you, you, because it's not a radical new change for you, or unlearning itself is actually easier. Huh. And of course we come back to the, to the cheesesteak analogy again, because the more you learn, the more appetite for a learning you actually have, and you much, and it is much easier for you to stomach new learning. Mm. Uh, there are countless examples of why broader learning is is really good. Um, first, I noticed that the people who had either mobile or desktop experience had had a much much easier time. Uh, learning how to, how to develop single page apps, even though in the beginning it seemed slightly unrelated uh, experience. Of course, broader learning is not always immediately useful. Sometimes it is just flexing the learning muscle, and sometimes it is something that is useful just a bit far f further in the future. Uh, I'll give you an example. For example, one of the reasons uh, our live blog pl plugin managed to scale was that it used 
two concepts which were very, very far away from the, from the WordPress and even web universe. One of them was using immutable data, which allowed us to, to cache a request to the, uh, a, a, re a request to the uh, servers indefinitely, which, which makes it really simple and easy. And, and the other one, and this, mm, and the concept of immutable data come, comes from functional programming many, many years ago. The other co concept was event sourcing, which means instead of keeping the data in itself, you keep all, all of the events happening, and when you need the actual data, you uh, reconstruct the events, which is a concept from early 2000s enterprise Java stuff. Uh, and combining those, it made it really easy to make a performant live blog. Uh, of course, we probably could have done it any other way, but still, ha having those broad knowledge was, was really, really useful. Uh, and of course, here comes the question, um, couldn't we just learn it when, when we needed it? Uh, the idea, and it's probably even a movement, learning by doing is incredibly popular today. Uh, but when we, have to new, when we have to learn something radically new and we are doing something, especially when we have the pressure of uh, shipping something, learning by doing is very often reduced to doing by doing. Where if we have even the slightest pressure, it is a lot easier for us to uh, default to our, old, to, to our old ways. And, and it becomes a lot easier to fail to unlearn. I have a few examples. Um, I've seen WordPress plugins which needed to be extended and had almost zero hooks, which is pretty classic. Uh, outside of programming, there are a ton of examples of when you, of people failing to unlearn old or habits, for, for example, have you ever seen some, especially older people using a computer as a typewriter when they always print stuff and instead of saving, saving, saving files and never correct things and just print, st start a new page. Uh, and there are countless examples like uh, this in history. For example, the change between riding a horse and riding a car is pretty big. And if you don't forget how to ride a course, probably kick, kicking the, the car on the side wouldn't re really help, even if you try. And why does even our learning time need to be so productive? If, if you look at marathon runners, do they run mar marathons so the time? No. M most of the time, they actually run sh much shorter distances or, or they lift weights. AKA they practice. Uh, if you look at uh, musicians, do they always play good sounding pieces? No, most of the time they play weird sounding etudes. And I've heard the, the saying from uh, uh, musicians that if you sound good, you're probably not practicing. Uh, martial arts is another great, great example where people don't fight all the time, but a lot of the time they do the so-called katas, we are carefully choreographed patterns, uh, which are designed just for practice. And for example, if you want to learn ES6, which is the new JavaScript thing, uh, there is a pretty great website called ES6 Katas, which, which breaks it down to a very small exercises, uh, whose goal is to just teach you very, very, very small pieces. And it's totally unproductive. You are not building a real project, but but you're learning a lot more targeted and specific things. Another example are code retreats, which are not incredibly productive, but still are very targeted and specialized exercises meant mostly for learning. Um, and the best learning is not always doing an actual project. Of course, the motivation of, of seeing the, the, the end result of, of, of our labor is great. But, but if it's something radically new and we want to learn a new concept and we want to go deep, deliberate 
And non-productive learning is almost always the way to go. But enough stupid ramblings. Um, probably a lot of you care a lot more, not, not, not about some weird terms around, like deliberate and unproductive, but what, what do we do now? What, how can I here help you probably learn more or better? Um, and before the end, I have two small action items for you. Uh, the first one is pick a, pick a new skill. I'm speaking mostly about developers, but I'm pretty sure it's not too hard if you're, even if you're not a, a developer to, to choose a new skill, something that can be broadly useful to you. Uh, but if you're a, a developer, I have a few ideas. Of course, everybody has been talking to, about JavaScript. This is an easy item on the list. Functional prog programming is really interesting. A lot of great ideas, even if you don't do it, e even if you don't use it directly. Like learn, looking in, in the world of single page apps is pretty interesting because it's totally different. Or just learning about any new language or uh, library. Uh, there is an old thing that every de developer should learn one new language a year. Uh, there is, a, there is a pretty cool book, if you haven't seen, uh, Seven Languages in Seven Weeks or something like this, which is also pretty, pretty cool, and they're totally different if, if, if you want higher exposure for a long time. Um, or, or you can look, look at totally different concepts like reactive programming. Uh, again, picking something totally new every year is a great idea. Even if you're a, a developer, knowing a bit more about user experience and design is incredibly helpful. It helps you understand your colleagues better and your users better. In, in general, any, anything about product and business is also pretty useful. Uh, you can even get into lower level things like, like algorithms or, or, or how the, a machine works. Uh, there are a ton of ideas here. So, so let's say we pick some, something. There are a ton of ways to learn it, but uh, uh, before that, I have something else. And the other I I item on the, on the action list is, let's just get better at learning. This would be the, the universally helpful thing. And I have two ideas here, because learning is a skill like any other. And, and, and we can learn it in, in the same old ways. First, I can re recommend you a great book. Even if you're, if you're not a book person, which is totally understandable, no, not everybody likes letters on a piece of paper or on a screen. Uh, I, I, I promise you this one will, will be uh, worth it. It's called Pragmatic Thinking and Learning. It's a great resource about Ways, ways to learn, f finding the best way for you to learn, and a lot of very practical ideas uh, about a learning plan. And, and the other resource is a course on Coursera called Learning How to Learn. L luckily, uh, uh, there is a new edition starting in January, I, I think, where when you can do it together with many more people. Mm. I've done it in the past and it's pretty cool. It's not very developer focused, but still it's incredibly useful. And just have fun. Lear learning is a lot of fun, especially as you learn more and you start having the, the shivers when you are not learning new uh, things every day. Um, I, I will leave you with, with probably the most influential idea in at least in my life, and which coincidentally happens to be the first line of uh, uh, the automatic creed, which is a funny story. When uh, this was the time when I almost left the company, but but then the creed came out, and like, oh, okay, I guess I'll have to stay. <laughs>
Thank you. I'm, I'm pretty sure we have plenty of time for questions. So. Yeah, we have 10 minutes for uh, questions. If you have a question, the, micro, the microphone is over there. I'm not like Nancy, and I will not be offended if nobody asks a question. <laughs> It's okay. You have 10 more minutes to get to, to, to the mic. Do you have any, whoa, it's loud. Do you have any tips about how to fit learning into your routine? Uh, this is a great question. Um, I have a few tips. Uh, I'm not sure if all of them will work great for you. Um, probably the best one is, even if you're super busy, probably learning is better investment in the future. So even if I have a lot of work to do, I just sometimes put learning time on my calendar when I'm, I read a book. Uh, to be honest, I'm a book fan, which is, uh, which is pretty co convenient. So. One, one other trick is that I put the Kindle app on my home, uh, on my main row on my phone. So now when I have five minutes, instead of checking Twitter or something, I, I accidentally open the Kindle app and I continue reading my book. Um, but, but mostly it's just pushing back against all of the stress because most of the, the stuff we do are not so urgent even if we have deadlines and stuff. Uh, and sometimes I don't tell anybody. I have spent some, some time learning. I sometimes don't include it in my weekly or bi-weekly or whatever report. Uh, but I just do. Even if I work less on, on, on other things. Once you've learned something, um, how do you bring it into the team context? How do other people around you on the team benefit from your learning? Any tips about that? Mm. Well, me being here is probably one of those ways. Uh, but it very much depends on the, on the, on the team. Uh, to be honest, I work on a distributed team and it's a little bit harder, uh, but just ta talking about it is a great starting point. Uh, if you learn something, share, with, share with, with others. It helps very, very much if you summarize things, and especially if you know the people, just tell them directly, oh, I, I think you would love this. Uh, but to be honest, I don't have anything more specific. Sure, go. I, I can always repeat the question. I just wanted to ask your personal opinion on speed reading and if you do it or uh, if you think it's a, a real thing, like a viable thing to read like a page in 10 seconds or something like that. To be honest, I don't know. I, I have heard, I've been interested in it. I almost went to a course once, uh, but I've heard very conflicting opinions. I've heard it's a scam. Some people have told me it totally worked for them. Um, so again, I don't know. But if it's not incredibly expensive and if it doesn't take so much of your time, I would try. It's on my list. Sure. I found that learning often works best in context, like in a project. Um, do you have any recommendations or resources or ways to find projects that fit and suit the level and skill that you're attempting to learn, like trying to match a project to whatever language or skill you're trying? Um, not many, but I have a few. 
Uh, one of them is a book I skimmed through recently. I can't totally vouch for it, uh, but it was called Exercises in Programming or something sim similar. Uh, it's by pragmatic programmers, so you can find it. So you can find it there. And the idea was to have a set of exercises uh, in different, uh, varying in difficulty and in size, so that every time you learn a new language, you go through the same thing. Uh, and, and you go through the same exercises, and you can compare your experiences with, with what you knew before. Uh, and this can give you a good ideas about projects. Uh, in the JavaScript community, there is an incredibly popular project called To Do MVC, uh, whose idea is to compare a lot of the front end frameworks. And basically, when you create a framework, together with it, you create a project like this. So if you want to learn something new, you can just not look at the reference implementation. You can try it your, yourself. And it's a pretty clearly defined task. Um, One interesting, another interesting small thing is just to implement game of life in every language or to implement, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I don't want to run my imagination loose because it, ran bad, it usually ends badly. <laughs> I hope this was enough. We have time for one or two more questions, but Hi. Um, so learning one thing a year seems like a really good idea and viable for most of us. So what's your opinion on technologies that are deemed trendy or bleeding edge or doesn't have a lot of real world use yet? Mm. Sure, this is a great question actually because there are a ton of technologies and, and we can spend all of our days just following the brand new thing. Um, Usually, at, at least what I, what I do first is to try A, see how is this different from everything else. Uh, and if it seems different enough, this usually means it, it is worth more because it's a totally different approach. And, and most of them are just approaches to things which, which you can use see even if you're writing in a totally different language or framework or anything. Most of them are just ideas. And the cool thing about ideas is that you can extract them even without learning the whole thing. <laughs> so, yeah, so probably this would be the, the first thing, extracting the ideas out of the hype and the actual implementation. Um, and then you, you, you can make a much more informed choice of what is cool for you and how much time do you have and, and if you just want to try something. Thank you. Sure. I don't have a question. I just wanted to respond to the person that asked, how do you integrate this? Because you get really busy. Um, I have scheduled every Wednesday from 9 to 1 to be at my public library where it's quiet. Nobody knows me. No one's bothering me. And I sit there, and that is my scheduled time to learn new things. I'm a sponge. I want to know what the latest is, and I don't take any appointments during that time. Everyone in my office knows I'm not there. And it's hard to do, but I've been doing it now for four months and it's worked wonderfully. So if you just put it in your calendar and you stick to it and you're serious about it, you can set the time aside and be in an environment where you can learn. I just wanted to share that. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much.